must constantly look at things in a different way. The Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast was created by two physical therapists out of the desire to learn more about the different educational roles in physical therapy and healthcare and how healthcare education works by talking with educational leaders and people with different perspectives within physical therapy and across interdisciplinary lines on how education can be improved to disrupt the status quo of healthcare education. This is our journey and thanks for listening. Are you a third-year physical therapy student that excels on tests when you have study guides, checklists, and deadlines? With all of the information available about how to prepare for the NPTE, it's easy to get disorganized and not feel prepared going into the big day. NPTE Prep Success is an online course that provides PT students easy-to-use study guides and step-by-step guidance through the NPTE preparation. To learn more, visit kylericeprep.com. Thank you again all for your continued support, and now for the show. A common theme, Mark, that seems to be brought up is, you know, telehealth increases, it improves access to our services, especially for those people that maybe can't, can't access physical therapy. Um, how and why did you create Anywhere Healthcare? I mean, I'm sure that was not an easy task. Yeah, that's a great question, Stephanie. Like, I, I have a few drivers behind the things that I do and knowing that Texas actually Texas has the one of the worst um, delays and access to, to providers in the country and then also uh, the data that just released that we have the most uninsured children in the entire country one in five kids in the state are uninsured um, there's a there's a huge need um, for for care. I started the, the nonprofit Revolution Human Health, and I partnered with the YMCA on the east side of Austin, which is a, a tends to be a, a more underserved population. Um, and just treating people there that that weren't able to get access to services. There's a six, and there was one gentleman. He he works. Um, he was getting his uh, his degree. His wife was uh, unemployed. They were on state supported help. Um, that he had an eight-month wait for physical therapy through the state-supported uh, MAPS program, the Medical Assistance Program in Texas. Six to eight-month wait for physical therapy. And so just understanding that like 36 of our counties in Texas don't have a physical a physical therapist in them. Um, in Texas, we have a large uh, a need, a discrepancy in, in access to care. And so um, being able to leverage technology made a lot of sense. And And, and so that's... The, the birthplace of Anywhere Healthcare was really, I mean, the, the, the tagline I use all the time is creating freedom for providers and access for patients, because that's what it's really about, is, is, is leveraging technology to get care to the people that need it. And there's no reason in this day and age um, why people have to drive three hours or two and a half hours to see a provider when, when they have a cell phone or they have a, an iPad, because it's completely doable. Um, most for most people via a virtual visit. So that's why I really, I, I created it is really to, to be able, and then a lot of people, and most of the, the platforms are cost prohibitive for providers. Um, and so I also wanted to make sure that the, the cost point for Anywhere Healthcare was low enough that it would be like, oh, that's all it is? That's a no brainer. Like I have to, I have to put this into my practice um, in order to, to, to help my patients. So those are the, those are the big drivers behind Anywhere Healthcare. Um, and, uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll get, uh, we'll get more and more people on the platform and then get more and more patients access to the care they need. Yeah, Mark, I love that tagline and, you know, I'd really like to dive in a little bit to the nuts and bolts of this thing. What really makes Anywhere Healthcare unique as opposed to some of the other platforms that are out there? So Anywhere Healthcare is unique, one, because it's an all-in-one, right? So when you list out the features, you have a HIPAA compliant G Suite with it, so you can do all of your 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 documentation um, and keep your patient records within that file. Um, two, it's got an, uh, a a billing suite, so you can bill your patients, and anywhere healthcare becomes a payment interme- intermediary. So we take a small fee uh, for every time you charge a patient. You don't have to use that fee, but you don't have to use the the payment feature. You can collect payment on your own, so it's a completely optional utilization. Um, three, it's got a scheduling feature, right? So a couple of the ones I talked to earlier, um, I know CoView and uh, I think Doxy has a scheduling option, which exponentially raises the cost of their platform. Um, so that's the 
uh, a part of it that's um, that's that's I think a really big value add because uh, so patients can create their they can request an appointment from their phone. Um, so two, the, uh, three, uh, four, it has uh, iOS um, and Android at, uh, patient facing apps, um, so patients can connect with you um, from their phone or tablet, which makes it super easy, and that's free for everybody. It's free for the patients to use uh, the app. There's no charge for them to download it. Um, and then uh, and then we just released uh, the messaging, in-app messaging. So the, the, it's the HIPAA-compliant messaging feature um, that allows you to directly message with your provider. Um, so there's no other platform that has those features at that price point uh, available on the market. So um, it's not that there's any... Uh, any well, I mean, it's it, it's the combination of the package for the price makes it uh, makes it the most unique and affordable platform out there. That's it in a nutshell. And we also um, are proud to say for every full paid pers- uh, uh, subscription that we will donate um, a platform utilization to, to a, a provider who who does not who treats patients that um, are indigent or homeless or are in need. So we actually give back to the community in order to allow that access to happen by providing um, free memberships for those in need for every one paid membership. Mark, That's what's awesome. the cost of Anywhere Healthware, Healthcare? I know you kind of mentioned that it's um, got a monthly fee of, I think you said like uh, 30, uh, 39.99 per month. Is okay. that correct? So it's just, so there's no sign up fee and there's no uh, usage cap. So it's $39 a month flat fee. Um, uh, yeah, so it's 39 bucks a month, unlimited use, um, and there's no sign up fee. And anyone who wants to give it a try, we do a, a free 30 day uh, uh, trial for, um, for those people looking to, to check it out to see what they, they think about the platform. And I would like to mention to our listeners that we have potentially a, a HET code that you're providing us. Yes. So if, if you email me, um, uh, with the code, uh, if you email mark at anywhere dot healthcare, uh, and with access and wanting to get um, on the platform and, and use the, the code HET, just, just make sure it's somewhere in the email that you, uh, you, you heard this on the, on the podcast or you, or you've heard this from S. Scott or Brandon or you, Stephanie, that it's, uh, this put HET code. I want to use the HET code in the email um, at marketanywhere.healthcare, and we can we make sure that that code applies and that discount applies for the, the entire time you're on the platform. And it's a 25% discount. Um, so it brings it down to $29 a month. Is telehealth a lucrative option? Yeah, I think it is. I think that I think um, when you look at the way you leverage it in your in your pay, in your practice, right? So if you, like I spoke about earlier, I think one of the best ways you can use this is getting people into your practice that you know want to be there. So offering a free telehealth visit or a free telehealth consult, right? Instead of a first phone call or a, a first, you know, a first email or a first phone call um, or a free discovery visit, you do all of this via telehealth, and it saves you time. And it saves the patient time from having to come all the way. So a lot of the issues you have with that free first consult, right, is when somebody drives all the way to your clinic, they fill out paperwork, they sit in front of you, you do basically a mini exam, and then they get to decide whether or not they stay in your clinic or they return as a patient or they sign up as a patient. With a video visit, it actually it makes so much more sense to get in front of that patient on a live video to talk to them just like you would in your clinic to make sure that they're ready to be there. And so you have a a much higher likelihood of that patient staying as a patient um, if you kind of screen them through this process and do an early telehealth visit to make sure that they're appropriate. So if you do that, you get more people in your patient that in your practice that want to be your patient. Um, and so yes, that you can be it can be when you leverage it, it can be very lucrative. And then you can also work the price of a telehealth visit into your cash based practices, right? So you can you can offer it as a you know forty five dollar a half hour consult or a telehealth follow up. Um, it's, it's, you need to have a conversation earlier in your plan, early in your plan of care with your patient to make sure that they are open to it and that they know it's part of the process, right? Um, and you offer. I tend to also offer it um, as a step down from an in person visit as well. So if you charge one hundred eighty dollars a visit, you can step that down to you know, 65 or $75 for a half hour um, visit that's virtual that saves the travel time for you and for the patient. Um, so, yes, I think depending on how you leverage the, the tele- telehealth in your practice, it can be an extremely lucrative way to go. 
Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense, Mark. And I know, like you said, there's so many things that need to be considered and a lot of research that needs to be done before someone kind of considers that and finds the right way for them. And, you know, I couldn't help but notice seeing that article that you posted recently that basically said that the VA has announced telehealth partnerships with Walmart, Philips, and T-Mobile as this is absolutely huge, man. So after hearing that, I got, I got two questions on that. One, what do you see the future outlook on telehealth being? And two, what are some of the changes that Anywhere Healthcare is looking to make in the short and long term? Yeah, so, yeah part of that, that article. So I, I mean, that article is really uh, a little bit mind blowing. So I, had, I was here at the American Telehealth Association uh, annual meeting um, a few months ago here in Austin. And there was a, a, one of the, the, the lead from Walmart uh, in the telehealth division, in the medical division, uh, spoke. And um, their idea, and their, their kind of uh, uh, goal was to be able for a person to have an, a virtual visit with a physician, have their, and then have their prescription ready for pickup at Walmart's curbside all within an hour for 15 bucks. Which, if you think about that logistically, um, it's pretty, that's pretty insane. Um, and so there's going to be some really big players stepping into uh, the virtual. And I mean, think about if when the Amazon, the Berkshire Hathaway, uh, uh, combination comes into play, could you imagine having a, a telehealth visit? Let's say you have a sore throat, you hop on uh, an Amazon provided, or you, you actually say, Hey Siri, or Hey, um, uh, what's Alexa. Um, set up a, a, a telehealth appointment for me. And then, then on your TV, a telehealth doc pops up. You have your visit. It's automatically charged to your Prime account. And then your antibiotics are shipped to your house or dropped to your house within two hours. So I think that in a large play, in a large space, some of the larger players will be leveraging tech and their volume to decrease the cost of healthcare tremendously. And I think that that's probably those types of delivery models are especially with Walmart, um, they're probably five to 10 years out uh, from becoming a reality. Um, but I think that that's, um, that that's something we all need to consider. And, and is that for every consumer? No, it's not. Um, but there's still going to be many, many people who need touch, who need, who, to, who desire to have a different healthcare path um, that will be able to, to uh, insurance will pay for it or they'll pay for it out of pocket. Um, but the way that anywhere healthcare is, is, is is, cha- is challenging that model is to allow and um, we're, we're going to take it back to the, to the provider that wants to connect with their consumer um, because anywhere healthcare, you don't, you don't connect with just any provider out there. You don't connect with a random provider and you connect with your provider. And I think that that continuity of care and that continued, a continued care from the same person that you know and trust um, is the value add that many people will look for in healthcare when it starts to become a mass market. Uh, for for random people on the other end. Now, in an emergency, that can make sense. Like if I if it's two a.m. and I need a uh, and my daughter has a fever and I want to get a prescription for something, man, that's an awesome option. Um, but for most people, for a lot of people, they're still going to need that continuity of care um, and that in that that touch of the person that they know and trust. Um, another interesting article I just saw yesterday was that in China, China is always pushing some boundaries. They're actually about to launch in a certain, a couple of, uh, I think a couple of beta testing spots, an AI driven, an artificial, artificial intelligence driven medical clinic with no humans. So that'll be a tell, it'll be virtual visits, telehealth visits with, um, that are all powered by artificial intelligence. So there'll be a non-human contact healthcare. All right. So it's only a matter of time before the robots take us over is what you're telling me. (laughs) Exactly. So you need to, yeah, we need to figure out how to, um, uh, fight the Terminator pretty soon. So it's going to be an interesting yeah. thing, or at least in healthcare. Yeah. Well, that's one of the ways to take out a population, right? Right. Yeah. It'll be an interesting, I, I think the Amazon, I think if they put their stuff together, I think it'll be an interesting platform where you can literally have a virtual visit on your television and your medications drop ship to you, Amazon Prime delivery within two hours of your visit. Yeah. I, yeah and that's sure. mind blowing. Yeah. 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 I love it. Well, Mark, you know, one of the things that I love about you is how much you give back to the community, how much you give back to your patients, how much you give back to clinicians. It's just amazing. And I know you've created Revolution Human Health, which is a nonprofit physical therapy network. 
uh, that kind of transforms the healing experience by offering access to treatment, education, and movement-based therapy for all. So how does this network specifically work, and how's everything been going with that thus far? Yeah, so I appreciate you asking about that, Scott. Like, it's the Revolution Human Health has been a, a, a passion of mine for the last couple of years, and finding so basically what it is is I've I've I wanted to, to donate care to people that that can't get it otherwise, right? These are people that that um, that can't afford healthcare or don't have access to it or can't get to their appointment. Um, and really, uh, I found a home at the Eastside YMCA um, where I have partnered with them. And they've given me access to a room in their in their facility. I've registered that with the state of Texas for the facility registration, and I literally um, they've uh, they've allowed me to uh, they've even put me on their schedule um, and allowed people to sign up uh, for for free healthcare. And so um, I I go there twice a month, uh, four hours um, every time, so eight hours a month, um, where people can sign up to have forty five minute uh, PT healthcare visits. And it could be anywhere from um, exercise prescription and follow up. Like I had a few patients that just were getting back to running and didn't know how to get back to running. Um, or were worried about some uh, some mechanics or worried about hurting themselves. And so we talked through a running program for them. Um, I've had a couple of patients. Uh, the interesting thing about healthcare is that um, it, it's a little bit frustrating in Texas. I still have to have a referral even if I give my services away. So the patients that I had to treat there, they had to go back to their docs and get a referral for P, for PT. Um, but uh, a, a loophole, not a loophole, but a, a good benefit in the Medicare world is that in Medicare, um, they 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 frown upon people paying out of network for Medicare services, uh, for cash services. But you can treat a Medicare beneficiary for free without violating anything. So I had a couple of patients that were Medicare beneficiaries that had capped out of their 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 PT benefits, according to them, um, and that I was able to treat them for free as well for for actually some interesting movement based uh, disorders that they had been seeking treatment for. Um, and so it was a really important it's a really important thing um, for me in my soul to, to help people have better lives. And we all know as physical therapists that better lives through movement um, uh, is, is one of the best things you can do, right? I mean, uh, and so partnering through IMCA um, allowed me to have a space. They, they put me up on their website. They've done a couple of, of uh, small uh, within the uh, the YMCA's advertising community. Um, they've offered me a spot to do lectures, community lectures and talks. And so it really has created this unique uh, partnership that um, not a lot of people in the country are doing. Um, and so with that and with some of the social media stuff, I've actually had other people in other states and cities reach out to me about becoming a part because that's the idea, right? I want to set the model for other people to plug and play this into their YMCA or their other community centers and go with it. So. Um, and when we uh, re, when we launch back up again in January, I'm going to um, I, I'm I'm creating everything in the HIPAA compliant Google Suite where we can just add providers across the country. And so I'm looking to find other people who would like to um, to jump on this and be a part of this network uh, to to try to provide healthcare or PT care for for people across the country who need it. Um, super simple. Super easy, but I think it's uh, it's a definitely a way to give back and a way to get into your community um, and a way to to be a part of something bigger. So that's what's uh, that's what's been going on, Scott. I'm just trying to to see if other people out there are willing to jump on board and and, and provide care. I love it. Are, I love it, man. What are some other ways, Mark, that providers can improve access to patients utilize by utilizing technology apart from telehealth? And this partnership that you've mentioned, right? So, um, so Stephanie, that's a, that's, a, that's an awesome question. So, I think that people, I, I know that there's uh, an entire nonprofit network of physical therapy clinics out there that are mostly in school, that are mostly associated with with uh, programs um, and PT programs across the country. And so, I think if you have an idea that you want to get in and start and start donating some time and care, I think that's a great place to start. Um, another place to start is to contact me uh, about uh, possibly becoming a, another site for uh, Revolution Human Health and, and, and becoming a part of that. But um, we can also leverage the telehealth platform within that, that use case as well. So um, I think that 
uh, I'm going to pilot, I'm going to pitch to the YMCA next year that we do one night a month as virtual visits. And so I don't have to deal with Austin traffic getting across town on, on an evening um, and maybe even adding a night um, where another provider does telehealth uh, from the YMCA. So we can put in, you know, uh, uh, an Android tablet that costs a hundred bucks. Um, you can drop that right in the clinic and people can access that uh, without having to, to have any other technological barriers. So I think leveraging technology, especially if you look at setting up sensors like this in rural communities, I know we're in Austin, we're a, a, we're a larger population center, but um, I know I have a, a colleague who's working, you know, 45 miles east of here, which is pretty um, rural, where we're looking at putting in um, a, a, a tablet there so we can do virtual visits at a distance so those communities can have more access to care. Um, really, it's just about creating a network around your state and partnering with small community centers or churches or other organizations that people have regular open access to that you can plug and play uh, some type of technology there. And typically, there's some type of uh, Wi-Fi service or, or better Wi-Fi or, um, or good cell service at those, at those community centers. So you can leverage not only the technology, but the infrastructure. Um, because to be honest, there's a, a, a lack of high internet, high speed internet in the United States is, is pretty disgusting uh, when you look at the, the numbers across the rural communities. So I think that's the way to do it, Stephanie. You got to look at partnerships with existing organizations and, and leveraging technology to get access to people that are outside of your, the, the city limits. Yeah. And, and that seems to really, really make a lot of sense when you just kind of phrase it that way. And I think now the thing is just getting people that are interested, looking into it and making it happen and literally GSD in it. Um, right. <laughs> GSD is the hardest part. Yeah. But you also have to look for people that have already established those relationships. Right. So right. Um, I think that's, that's one of the most interesting things is now that, with this YMCA, the partnership I've had here, um, the, the woman who has created all of this and allowed um, me to do it and championed me, um, uh, her name is Lauren Milas, she's actually reached out to other YMCAs and told them about what we're doing, right? And so when you have that connection, when you have the people that support you, you've got to just ask them to ask for you, right? You've got to be okay with saying, hey, could you reach out? Is there any other YMCAs or areas that you think this would be beneficial? And let's, let's, start a, let's try to create it. So we're gonna we have one that we're working on in in, uh, in Memphis. We have uh, another partnership we're working on in El Paso. Um, so just trying to figure out the best best ways to con connect the dots. Because once you have a system that's plug and play, all you need is people. Right, and and yeah, and that that totally makes sense. And Mark, I want to thank you for coming on and just sharing a lot of this very helpful insight because I think this is definitely very helpful for students, educators, but also just the general physical therapy and healthcare provider um, professionals across the country to really know about this avenue because it's coming, yeah. like you had said. And, you know, of course, you know our big G is our big final question that we ask everyone, which is if you could change one aspect of healthcare education, which aspect would you change it? How would you change it? And, and on our first episode, Mark, your answer was, modifying the cost of physical therapy education. So we know that's yeah. your number one. Now let's ask the same question about a year later. So what's your second aspect Ooh. of education that you would change? Well, I think, I think because of the bias I have of this conversation today, I really do think that technology needs to be integrated into PT practice, into education, right? So um, I don't think there's any, any, school or any program currently right now that has, um, uh, I, well, I'm sorry. I think that Baylor has a, a small, uh, the, the new Baylor DPT program has a small tech tech part, but nobody's offering or teaching a course on leveraging technology and physical therapy. So um, if any program needs that, hit me up because I can, I'll, I'll teach it and I'll do a guest lecture. Um, but I think leveraging technology and physical therapy, I think needs to be added. Like there's a, um, people are coming out like, what do I do? How do I do it? Where do I go? And 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 it makes sense because the ramp is pretty steep on the tech on technology that's happened. But I think that that needs to be something that's added. And there's other not just technology in telehealth, but technology in virtual or VR and virtual reality. There's technology in in leveraging apps and different um, <clears throat> uh, and different applications that patients can use for for pain control and pain modulation. There's there's technology in in devices. Um, that are different now with exoskeletons and different types of amazing um, ways to help people move. I think there needs to be a technology track 
in physical therapy. And PTs need to start creating stuff. We need to start step up our creative design and get out there in the startup world and start creating things that can be beneficial for a larger patient population. So yeah, that's my answer now. And so, um, I, yeah, that's it. Let's, let's start creating bigger and better things in technology and physical therapy. Yeah. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your time and for coming on the show again. Uh, yeah. You know, we at the healthcare education transformation podcast really believe in you and what you're doing, uh, which is why we were, so thrilled to partner up with you uh, for an affiliate link. Uh, remember, guys, just for being a listener of the show, uh, we appreciate that. And uh, in order to kind of show our appreciation, uh, we kind of partnered up with Mark here. Use the code HET for a discount if you're looking to sign up for a telehealth platform. Uh, Anywhere Healthcare is the, the platform that uh, we support right now. We love it. Uh, you know, Mark, where can people reach out to you and find you if they have follow-up <coughs> information they want to ask or questions they have for you? Yeah, so easiest email is just mark at anywhere dot healthcare. Um, but I'm also on Facebook, Mark Milligan DPT, um, Twitter, Mark Milligan DPT, Instagram, Mark Milligan DPT, also anywhere dot healthcare or anywhere healthcare on Instagram as well. So I'm really available and reachable in any space. Um, but yeah, uh, you can hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on Facebook. Um, anywhere healthcare has a Facebook page as well, so you can go there and message me. So readily available, um, my cell phone number, 303-523-2441. I'm always uh, looking to connect and also create opportunities, right? So um, if anybody wants to partner up or create an, an, another interesting opportunity for access to patients in this country, I'm open to talking. Um, because like Brandon said earlier, um, if there's something happening in the physical therapy, I'm a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> or I'd like to be a part of it. It's such a fact in that statement, Mark. And you know, I really appreciate all that you've done and all that you continue to do. And I keep it up, doing great stuff. Yeah. And thanks for coming on again, man. Always a pleasure. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, you Mark. guys too. Yeah, Stephanie and Brandon and F. Scott. Like, I really, really appreciate and sincerely appreciate you guys having me on um, and, and helping to spread the word about telehealth and, and, and nonprofit work in, in the physical therapy space. Access to healthcare is one of the largest issues facing both providers and patients, as millions of people worldwide lack timely and affordable access to healthcare. Anywhere Healthcare, a telehealth platform, is a simple, low cost option for providers and patients that eliminates the barriers to access to all kinds of healthcare. To find out more, check out anywhere.healthcare, which is available on our show notes. And if you use the code HET in all caps when you email to sign up, you'll save 25% off the total cost. Thank you for attending class today. And we hope that you learned something and gained value from the content. If you'd like to schedule office hours with us, feel free to add us on Twitter at HET Podcast, on Instagram, HET Podcast, on Facebook, the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast, and the homepage, Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast.com. And for those of you following along in the syllabus, extra credit can be obtained by liking us, sharing us, and leaving a review. Let's continue our journey up Mount Educational Success as lifelong learners.